All right, well there is the antenna mount that I just finished Duracoating. It turned out pretty good. I'm pleased with it. And a little shout out, 550 Shop. Thank you very much for the uh, comment. And as mentioned, I'll get a video out on that antenna mount real quick here. But uh, it turned out nice. I'm very, very pleased with it. All right, well, we're going to leave the Dura coating and we're going to head on up to the shop first aid kit. I'll take that down and we'll head inside and take a look what the contents include. Okay, guys, before we head indoors and talk about what's in this shop first aid kit, let's talk about something as important as having the shop first aid kit, and that is prevention. Remember the old adage, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, and that really holds true in the shop. I think the most important tool that you have in the shop is your head. Exercising common sense, certainly having read and understand all the manuals for your tools, knowing how to operate them safely, and most importantly, knowing what their limitations are, what they can do and what they can't do. Additionally, having good hearing protection is vital. Having good eye protection so a good pair of safety glasses and sometimes you're going to need to switch these out and use goggles or even a face shield depending upon the operation that you're doing. You also want to always protect your lungs. So a good dust mask or if you're applying finishes an appropriate uh, respirator that is um, rated for the finish and the solvent that you're using. Another important tool in your shop I believe is to have a phone. If you get into trouble and need to call for help, you want to have that help immediately available. And I've always had a, a phone in my shop and I think it's one of the most uh, important things when you're looking at the general uh, context of shop safety. All right, let's take this shop first aid kit down and bring it inside. We'll go through the contents and I'll show you where you can download some links that will have a contents uh, list as well, if you're going to build this exact kit, you can also download the uh, label. Now this is sitting up in my shop. It's on one of the shop doors. I have a lot of finishes and glues in this cabinet. And this is a great place. It's a little bit out of the way, but it's immediately visible. It's easy to access and it's right there when I need it in my shop. Now I've only had to use this kit once. Um, and I'm sure glad that I had it in my shop. You can actually check out my woodworking blog, The Folding Rule, and I actually cut my wrist sharpening a plane iron. It was a pretty bad cut. I actually lacerated a tendon in my hand, and I had to have that repaired by a plastic surgeon. Everything worked out totally fine, but um, I'm sure glad that I had this first aid kit in my shop, and it was right there where I needed it. Now, I have this mounted on this cabinet wall, and it's ready to come down by just grabbing the handle, and pulling it down. It's held up on the cabinet wall with Velcro strips that are made by a company called 3M and these are their command adhesive Velcro strips. So one part of the strip is on the box and then another set of strips are up here on the cabinet wall. The weight of the uh, first aid kit is carried by a piece of aluminum angle iron also held on the cabinet uh, door by some command adhesive. That way if we move and sell this house I'll be able to take this off. There's no damage to the cabinet and this goes with me to the next shop. Hopefully a bigger shop with more tools. Alright guys let's head indoors and we'll go through this kit and look at all the contents. Okay the contents for this shop first aid kit is available as a downloadable PDF and the link for that is in the footnotes below. Just go to that link and click it and you can download the contents. On the bottom of the contents page, there's a nice little form there where you can put in your basic medical information that will be important if someone has to take you to an emergency department, urgent care clinic, or the hospital. So you put your name on the top, list your personal physician, your preferred hospital, and then in case of emergency contact, the person's name and appropriate phone numbers, home, cell, and work. It's important to let us know your last tetanus booster if you go to the hospital. And then these four blocks down below, just a place where you can make some quick annotations of allergies, medications, current medical problems, 
and any important surgeries that you've had in the past. The other thing that you can download with this instruction list is the label for this particular shop first aid kit. You could certainly modify this if you want, but if you're going to build this exact kit, this label is made to fit in the center recess of this Stanley organizer box. Basically all you do is print this on an Avery full-sized white shipping label. I use this technique quite a bit. Once you print that on your inkjet printer, you just spray three to four coats of clear lacquer or shellac and then trim to the outside edge and that will make a nice durable label for your shop first aid kit that will resist moisture, dirt, and grime. All right, we're going to go through the first aid kit. Um, now, there's a lot of different cases or containers that you can put your shop first aid kit in. The container is not so important. What's important is that you have all the important materials in your shop to take care of yourself should you sustain a minor or severe injury. Now I chose to use this Stanley organizer box just because I felt that it um, answered all the uh, questions that I had for making a nice first aid kit. It has compartments that I can put all the materials and organize them much like a uh, medicine cabinet in your home. And that's the way this is sort of organized. So there's materials in here to take care of serious injuries as well as some more minor injuries. And to be honest, in the shop, what you're going to run into the most is going to be minor injuries, um, scrapes, cuts, splinters, something in the eye. And so everything for that is in this kit. Okay guys, I'm going to apologize in advance. Uh, this will probably be a slightly longer video than I like to do normally. A lot of material to cover here. I'm going to be as quick but as clear and concise as possible. Alright, let's get inside the kit. There is that medical information sheet that we talked about. Now you'll look inside here and you'll see that this is organized in compartments. And this upper compartment is nothing but gloves. Now you might say, why should I put gloves in this first aid kit since I use gloves like this in my shop all the time? And that's a great question. Um, and I can say uh, the reason I do it is because what if you ran out? Um, basically what I like is everything in one kit. And I think in a first aid or survival kit, um, everything contained in one kit is vital. So that's why I put uh, gloves in there. In this box is a lot of band-aids of different sizes. And we're going to run into uh, probably more cuts and uh, abrasions in the shop than anything else. And so I've got an assortment of some large band-aids that are kind of like the size that go on a knee or elbow or certainly on a forearm. There are some medium sized square band-aids, again just large coverage. And then a bunch of smaller strips, everything from half inch, three quarter inch, and one inch. And some of these actually have antibiotic ointment on them already and I think that is a good option to consider when you're stocking your shop first aid kit. Last but not least is a package of some uh, cleaning wipes so you can clean a wound. I have two packs of 4x4 gauze pads. Now there's 10 pads in each um, bag and they fit pretty nicely right in this container. So there is 20 4x4 gauze pads. That should get you going for any type of injury. In this container, I've got a couple of things. There is a box of super glue packs. Now, I use that a lot for uh, little sharp uh, cuts, paper cuts, that type of thing. If you get a splinter and take it out, I sometimes will cover that with super glue and I can keep working and it, it makes it a little bit less sensitive. Always want to clean a wound really well before you use this and um, certainly apply it um, in the right setting. I also have a small uh, SAM splint. This is for making a finger splint. If you jam your finger, dislocate and reduce it, or even if you get a broken finger and need to go to the hospital, splinting it will add a lot of comfort. There is a roll of, um, this is Coflex. 
It's basically a uh, stretchy, self-adherent uh, bandage with no adhesive. And then another dressing that I like a lot is a um, ace wrap. So you can do a compressive dressing should you get um, some bleeding that you need to control. All right. It's been a while since I've been in this box, so I'm kind of doing it um, on the cuff. And what I'm going to do is fold the lid down because I'm reaching behind with one hand. It's a little hard. Now, this is where I have some medications, and basically I have ibuprofen and Tylenol, and those are just over-the-counter medications, good for um, general pain, and uh, should you develop a headache, these are great options to have out in the shop and keep working. Okay, we'll go in that one last. I've got a lighter, and that's really good if you need to sterilize a, um, a needle or a pin if you need to remove a splinter. A tube of Neosporin ointment. I think in a shop first aid kit, a tube is going to be much better than the individual packets. But you kind of decide what works best for you and, and make sure that you have some type of antibiotic ointment in your first aid kit. And then either some Mastisol or some Benzoin, uh, basically skin glue to make sure that uh, dressings, band-aids stick better to the skin. All right, in this tube, I've got all my splinter stuff and basically a little splinter toolbox, if you will. So there's a couple of safety pins. Those are good for using the point. If you need to dig a splinter out, you can always sterilize that with your uh, lighter. A fingernail clipper is good if you get a hangnail or get a, a caught edge. I think all of us have experienced that. You can quickly trim that out there in the shop and keep working without any real interruption. And then I got a uh, couple of um, 18 uh, gauge needles. And if you don't have access to these, no, no worry, you can certainly use these uh, safety pins. But I like these as well for digging out a splinter. This is another great little splinter item, and that kind of migrated because I used it um, a while ago. Uh, these are available REI, and you can order them actually anywhere online. But they're very nice stainless steel, very finely ground, sharp points. Great for taking splinters out. This is basically some equipment to help um, with um, irrigation, some uh, instruments in case you need them. and some non-stick Telfa dressing. All right, let's make sure we got everything here. Now you can order these on any uh, uh, medical supply online. These are Xeriform gauze. I have some Steri strips of different sizes all the way from quarter inch on up to half inch. You can also order these online. These are Tagaderm. These are um, basically transparent bio-occlusive dressings. And if you get an abrasion and you clean it up, these are great to put on that abrasion. They actually um, are, are fairly stretchy and you can continue working and not have uh, that abrasion open to uh, being irritated. Some Telfa non-adherent pads and then a couple of packages of uh, burn gel. Basically this is benzocaine and if you get a, a minor burn or an abrasion, this helps numb that keeps you working in the shop. All right, now this is also available online. You can get a large 20cc irrigating syringe and uh, something called a Zero Wet. You can order these online as well. And basically this just slips on the end of the syringe and acts as a uh, shield and also a focused nozzle when you're irrigating a wound. Let me, let me just open this up and show you. And I've seen these zero wets on a number of online medical uh, places, so they're pretty easy to get and they're very inexpensive. So basically they just slip on the end of the syringe and inside, if I can focus in there, there's a small irrigating tip and you just put that down on the wound and irrigate. And that's the best way to clean a wound. All right, there's a bottle of eye wash and an eye wash cup. 
All right, I always like to have a couple of instruments, um, a pair of hemostats, a pair of bandage scissors, and a pair of tweezers. Again, just having these tools readily available prevents you from having to go search them out when you need them, and it keeps you working in your shop. All right, this box has some adhesive tape, there's some heavy duty athletic cloth tape, and then some perforated micropore plastic tape, and a small roll of uh, CoFlex. This is great if you need to make a wrap around your finger. This is real soft, flexible, self-adherent with no adhesive. And then a box of pre-cut uh, butterfly uh, closures. All right, this box has a couple of rolls of Curlex in the smaller sizes. So um, this is a three inch roll, two of them, and then a little one inch roll. This is great for if you have to wrap around a hand, a forearm, or a finger. This is a large roll of Curlex. That's four and a half inches. That's for putting a, a tighter dressing on a broader surface. Uh, certainly can be used for helping control bleeding. This is what I used when I cut my wrist with a couple of four by four pads. Right, last but not least, and guys, I hope that you don't ever have to use this box, but I think it's important to have it in this kit. And again, remember, uh, prevention is worth a pound of cure. And if you use safe operating procedures in your shop, hopefully you'll have a very enjoyable shop process and never seriously injure yourself. I can tell you that I've managed a number of uh, bad table saw cuts in the emergency department. And if you were to sever a finger or something along that line, you need to be able to get help rapidly and Trust me, when that happens, you don't want to be running around trying to find stuff to take care of yourself. And again, I hope you never need this, but this is what I have in my shop should that ever happen. There's a package of Quick Clot. All of this stays in one box. Now this is um, um, basically a container of uh, emergency drinking water. And this is here because I don't want to have to run and get water should I ever have to use this. So basically this is used to dampen this pack of 4x4s that is already in, of course you guys know me, this is an, a lock sack bag. And um, basically you get those 4x4s damp. not sopping but damp, the severed digit would go in there, you'd seal it. And then this is a, another lock sack bag that has a uh, basically a crush and cold pack. So the severed digit would go in this bag, you'd crush this, you would put the bag with the severed digit in there, and get heading to help as soon as possible. And of course, you'd want to apply a compressive dressing. Unlikely you're going to need this quick clot, but it's always good to have that. Again, that points out the need to have that phone in your shop so you can get help. All right, guys, that is my shop first aid kit. Don't forget that the most important tool that you have in your shop is your brain exercising common sense and safe shop operating procedures. And again, don't worry too much about the box. Any box will do. Make sure that you've got a first aid kit in your shop. Thanks, guys.